ለመማር ወደ ትምህርት ተቋም መሄድ ግድ አይደለም ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ ራሳችሁን ከኮሮና ቫይረስ ወረርሽኝ የጠበቃችሁ በቤታችሁ ወይም በተመቻችሁ ቦታ በኢንተርኔት አማካኝነት በኦንላይን ትምህርታችሁን መከታተል ይቻላል ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ ኢንስቲትዩት ኦፍ ኮመርሻል ማኔጅመንት አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር የሚሰጡ ትምህርቶችን ተከታተላችሁ በ6 ቶር ጊዜ በአለም አቀፍ ደረጃ ተቀባይነት ያለውን የስልጣና ማስረጃ ባለቤት መሆን ይቻላል ከኢትዮጵያ ሲቪል አቪሽን ባለስልጣን ሙሉቅና ባገኘንባቸው የፍላይት ኦፕሬሽንና የሆስተስ ስልጣናም በመዝገባ ላይ ነን ጥያቄና መልስ የክፍል ስራዎች ብሎ ፈተና መፈተን ክፍል ውስጥ እንዳላችሁ አይነት ልምድ ባላችሁ መምራን እየተማራችሁ በኦንላይን ባላችሁበት ቦታ አድራሻ ከ22 ማዞሪያ ወደ ሾላ ገበያ በሚወስደው መንገድ 150 ሜትር ገባ ብሎ ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ ህልሞን እውን ያደርጋል Yes, Sami now you can go. Ahead. Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh okay, Sh- shall we begin then? Yes, okay. we should. Begin. Okay. Okay, good evening everyone. August good evening uh so my title uh, the title i was given was uh, type of types of organizational structure uh part of which i was focusing on the parts not only on the parts but maybe uh, to give also uh, a little bit of uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, definition like uh, what uh, sorry what the organizational structure is and then uh, i will proceed So the organizational structure is a formal uh, system task or uh, and reporting regulation showing how workers use resources so uh, this is a little bit of a definition but why do we say or why do we think uh, activities should be organized then uh, you know we want them to be organized because we have to divide work we have to assign and coordinate tasks and responsibilities Uh, to cluster jobs to establish relationship and formal lines of authority so for that i think uh, we need an organization this is why we need uh, organizational structure so what determines then what are the structures in an organization mainly four items uh, are said to be the determinants namely uh, organizational environment uh, technology human resource last but main and not least one is strategy uh, and then the design processes uh, what uh, it is to design the organizational structure uh, one is differentiation uh, depending on the uh, uh, different uh, reasons as to why we differentiate one is manager school time orientation interpersonal or, uh, orientation formalization and so on and then the different uh, differentiation types also would determine the type of organizational structures we design particularly the horizontal differentiation the vertical and the spatial uh, uh, differentiations and then the other uh, design process could be also dependent on integration which we say is uh, a vertical uh, integration or uh, also horizontal integration this also would affect the design uh, of the uh, organizational structure then the dimension uh, the dimension of an organizational structure then uh, or the structure uh, design uh, would uh, depend may also depend on simple management theory which uh, uh, which uh, would be on centralization or the decentralization so if uh, the organization is focused on centralization then uh, it could be having uh, some kind of uh, uh, structures and if it is decentralized then it could be uh, having a different type of uh, structure so these are uh, the design uh, dimensions uh, we we can focus 
Then the other thing is on departmentalization. So uh, the departmentalization of a company or organization could also uh, affect the way the structure is designed. Particularly, it could be uh, uh, functional departmentalization or it could be a product uh, departmentalization or it could be a customer uh, uh, depart departmentalization. It could be geographic or process. So there, we can have those kind of uh, uh, different types that would uh, uh, what you could, that would affect the uh, the uh, structure. Then the other thing is we will have we can have also a, a mechanistic or organic kind of organizational structure. So what are the different the, the differences? Maybe mainly we can say of uh, mechanistic are uh, the high specialized. Uh, highly specialized, uh, rigid departmentalization, clear chain of command, and so on. Whereas when we come to the uh, organic one, it could be cross-functional teams, there could be cross-hierarchical teams, free flow of information, and so on. Those would be also a different type of uh, 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 organizational setups. And then uh, following uh, the difference and the main uh, aspects of the mechanistic and organizational organic organization would be uh, those uh, following. But in summary, a mechanistic one is uh, more stable. There is low uncertainty environment, whereas in the organic uh, type of organization, it could be unstable and it could be also having high uncertainty uh, environment. And those particulars are also underneath. Then the structure configuration this is very important. Now, when we configure uh, uh, an organizational structure, these five different types of uh, configuration could be used. I will, I will not enter to the details, but then I'll just mention those five. One, it could be a simple structure, or it could be a machine bureaucracy, or it could be a professional bureaucracy, or it could be div divisionalized form, or it, it could have also autocracy. So these are the five structure configurations you can mention. Then what kind of, or what types of organizational structures do we have, or can we have? There are a lot of them. I will just mention some of them, and I will I'll go quick because uh, uh, we're given a limited time. So one is a functional structure. It would focus on the function or what is going to be done and who's going to do it. So it mainly focuses on the uh, function uh, kind of thing. So it's functional structure. Or we can also have a divisional structure. So it focuses on divisions. So like uh, divisions uh, create smaller manageable parts of a firm. So it's like chunks uh, of uh, an organization. And maybe it could also uh, divisions like uh, marketing, finance, uh, uh, maybe procurement and all could be also uh, being done. So these are kind of divisional structure. And the third one is product structure. So this kind of setup focuses on a product. So assuming uh, like a company having different uh, types of line items or products, so that the, the uh, organizational structure could focus on the uh, product structure. For instance, uh, there, uh, there uh, as we see in the picture, we can have the CEO, corporate managers, different managers, and then we could also have the product division types like uh, washing, uh, machine, and dryer division, which is some kind of line item. Then the lighting division, electrical uh, kind of uh, division, uh, different line item, and then the television and stereo division, the tapes and all. So it could also have a different division. Then underneath or under each, there could be sub, uh, subdivisions or functions. So this is what we call product structure. Then the geographic structure. Now this one focuses on the geographic areas of a company or where it operates or where the, the market is. So it's on uh, focus on uh, the, the geography. So like the geographic division could be like north, west, south, east, south, east, south, west. And uh, you know, this kind of area type of uh, structure uh, is called geographic uh, structure. And then there is this market or customer structure. So this type of structure also focuses on the market, type of market. So for instance, 
When we come to the market divisionalization, it could all, it could focus, uh, for for example, on large business customers or what we call corporate customers or small uh, enterprise customers. It could be educational, it could be individual, or it could be maybe a kind of uh, market where we focus uh, or uh, chunk our uh, customers into markets, and then this kind of treatment or uh, structure could be designed. And then the fifth one is global structure, like uh, taking the whole group, the, the whole globe. This could be subdivided into two. One is global geographic structure, like we have the whole globe, and then we can have uh, a kind of um, um, a region type, or maybe continental type, or maybe directional type. Uh, for instance, on the geographic structure, uh, there is a mention of a Pacific region, South American region, European region. I think we can give uh, uh, Ethiopian, uh, I mean, uh, Ethiopian Airlines uh, as an example, where it gives uh, markets in different. The Middle East is a different one in Europe. North and uh, the North America, which is Canada and America, is a kind of a global uh, uh, structure, which is geographic structure or it could be South America. Or we can have also the B, which is a global product structure. So it focuses on the global structure, but then it will subdivide them, not on geography, but kind of products, where we have the products as a focal point to design the structure. The, the sixth one, which is a matrix structure, uh, is a structure where we have a combination of uh, more than one. So we have, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, product structure combined with the teams, product structure combined with geography, product structure uh, combined with, uh, with market, and so on. So this kind of combination could be called the uh, matrix uh, structure uh, designing type. Then uh, what we have next is the uh, uh, seventh one, the product team structure. So here it focuses on two things, mainly two. One is the product, and then we do have also the team members, which are the employees or the, those who function in each. So as, uh, as an example, we've taken like engineering could be one uh, uh, product, but then the team members, manufacturing unit is one subdivision, or sales and marketing is one, and then it could also have a manufacturing unit in it. So it could be like a cross platform, but combining product with team structure. Then we, we can also have uh, a talk of structures in terms of uh, the length or width of uh, the structure. The, the first one in this, or the eighth in sequence, is the tall structures, where we have this kind of uh, like chewing gum, like uh, where we have a very long or very tall uh, kind of structure. Uh, this uh, could be uh, having levels where it goes to the, to the last or to the low level uh, employees or even a kind of function or product. Then the ninth one is flux. Uh, unlike the tall structure, the flat one goes maybe horizontal. So we'll have maybe uh, three levels where we have uh, this a, a flat, a flat kind of uh, platform. This is uh, another uh, kind of structure. And then the tenth one is the virtual structure. Here we don't have the physical uh, structures, or we can, so like virtually, uh, where people can uh, use information and communication technologies to kind of form uh, the uh, structure. So here, people who are uh, virtually organized primarily to interact uh, through electronic means. So we don't have this kind of uh, physical uh, uh, structures. So for instance, in this uh, time of uh, COVID, where uh, people are uh, encouraged to stay home or maybe to lock down, but still people are working from their homes, we still have those kind of structures, but then they are not physically interacting or they are not even uh, communicating physically, but still the virtual structure exists. So this can, uh, can be an actual example of the virtual structure. Then the 11th one is the boundaryless structure, where we don't have this kind of geographic boundary. Now here in the geographic boundary, 
it is uh, a contemporary approach. It's really a recent one, and then uh, this is kind of uh, to a globalized uh, markets or uh, uh, products or this kind of things. I think this is uh, the recent or con contemporary kind of uh, uh, co uh, uh, structure designing. It is boundaryless organization, uh, flexible and unstructured organizational design. We don't have where we don't have this kind of formal uh, division. I mean. Uh, structures, and then it removes internal or uh, horizontal boundaries. There is no horizontal boundary. It eliminates chain of command. There is no span to uh, span of control. Uh, it uses empowered teams rather than departments. There is no departmentalization. It's like each one is empowered to do what he or she is uh, able or willing uh, to do, but without any kind of uh, boundaries. Like uh, there could be a boss, yet I'm just uh, an ordinary guy which I can directly communicate to, to, the, uh, to, to the boss or can, I can get also uh, a kind of orders from him or her without any uh, follow-up of structures. Then it's, it also eliminates external boundaries. There is no also external uh, boundaries in this. So those are uh, the uh, types of organizational structures. Thank you, and Asante Sana. If you have uh, questions, I think uh, I'm going to accept. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much for your appreciation. Now, any question from the members who are present? Any question? Yes, Shimeles. Shimeles, please. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, okay. I can hear you. Uh, thank you, Sami. It's very interesting. Uh, good presentation. I do have uh, one simple question. Uh, yeah, you have seen, we have seen different types of structures, organizational structures. But my question is, can you say that this type of structure is better than the other type of structure? Can you say like this? Can you select this one is better than the other type of structure? Is that possible to say? Uh, yes and no. Uh, like uh, if I'm just uh, giving, uh, uh, I mean, one taking over the other, in general, we cannot say this is better than the other one. The uh, preference of one over the other depends highly on the different uh, selection criteria. For instance, the strategies. What kind of strategy a company would follow would really uh, matter on what kind of uh, uh, organizational structure we would select. And the second one is what kind of uh, uh, focus or do we have on the in the organization for instance if my company is focusing on markets on types of uh, products i sell then it would for, for me it would be uh, preferred to have a, a kind of product uh, a type of uh, structure uh, than a different one or maybe if i'm focusing on markets on on geographies like if i'm focusing on uh, the kenyan um, uh, market and then the djibouti and so on Maybe I could subdivide in, in, in such kind of, or maybe also a different uh, selection criteria or uh, could be what kind of chain command do I have? If we have very long kind of chain of command from top to the, to the bottom, and then we, we tend to have this kind of uh, tall kind of structure. So, uh, you know, the selection criteria for one over the other would depend highly on the company's uh, I mean, uh, strategic goals and then what it achieves to do and what it intends to sell, where it's going to sell the products to whom, the, uh, the customers, all those factors will be considered to choose one over the other. Okay, another question, please. Uh, you remember this is uh, an open forum. You're supposed to contribute. Another question. Another question. Okay, I think uh, if there's no question, I think the, the, the perception is okay. And uh, most of the issues have been captured. I think we also covered this in class, so I don't expect uh, any challenge with that. But, but what is important is, um, you know, what is important with this organizational structure is to understand, you know, how they come about. Why do we have tall? Why do we have short? Why do we have product-based? 
where do you have divisional, where do you have geographic, where do you have global. That, that's the key thing, you know, you need to understand that. And then also you need to understand the issue of centralization, I think you talked about it, versus decentralization. And the issue of departmentalization, these are very key important things um, in the issue of structures. Then, of course, understand what are the considerations for, for the structure? What do you consider before you arrive at this structure or this structure? I think you talked about resources, you talked about the size of the farm, age of the farm. There are many factors that will determine the size of the farm. That's why you find very big organizations or very old organizations have a big structure, maybe a matrix or something. But when the farm is still small, the departments are few, the staff are few, few. Um, you know, the centers of power are few. So you may find a small farm with a small structure, but as time moves by, then, um, you know, as time moves by, uh, then you find out it accumulates, it accumulates resources, it accumulates departments, it accumulates products and services, so it becomes big. Now, the moment it becomes big, it opens up, you know, opportunities for departments to come in and more, more in mass, then it becomes a big organization. So I think that, that is wonderful. Uh, maybe we can go for the second uh, presenter, please. Are you already uh, made a presenter? I hope you have been. Shimeles, you are number two. Okay, thank you, doctor, okay. You already made a presenter. Uh, thank you, doctor and uh, my classmates. Here is the, my topic is for make or buy decision. Uh, for this uh, presentation, I would like to put it in the four outlines. Uh, in the introduction parts, I would like to put what make mean, what is buy, and what is make or buy decision mean, what is its importance from what aspects we consider make or buy decisions? In the second outline, we'd like to see reason for making. When one company prefer making to buy, what are the reasons why they want to make? And in the other cases, we'll see also the buying reasons. When the company prefer buying to making, what is the reasons for buying? Then in the for the cases, we'll see stage for make or buy decisions. What are the stages? Any company, they don't spontaneously, simply take either make or buy. They do have their own stages in order to arrive the decision for make or buy decision. And we'll see in the last, the conclusion. Let's come to in the introduction part. The make or buy decision. The make or buy decision is the act of making a strategic choice. Put in your mind, it is a strategic choice because it is not simple either to prefer make or to prefer buy. So we should consider the strategic decision between producing product, product internally in a house or externally from the provider. This is the key strategic choice between make or buy decision. The make or buy decision has its own methodology. One of the most critical strategic decision within the logistic outsourcing and showing be taken in structure and consistent manner. Put in your mind also here, buying and make decision, it is not one-time decision. It must be a consistent manner and structured. Any company simply, I like to buy, I would like to make, they don't do like this. Must have a consistent manner and it is based on the logic for reason. So, for these cases, a practical guide to the decision must be made step by step. It has its own stage. We'll see in the bottom. So the high level steps are as follows. When the company, you know, when they want to make a decision, either make or buy, they should follow the following. Evaluate whether outsourcing is right for your company. You don't do simply, I want to make any manager or any organization. They don't pick the, like the word buying or making. They should make the right for the company. Is it benefitable for company? 
can give me competency? Does it have the best choices for the company? They should evaluate whether outsourcing is the right for the company. Then determine exactly what are the functions to outsource. Maybe some companies, they might outsource the whole functions, some part of the functions. So they should determine exactly what function to be outsourced. Then use a well-defined professional selection process. By the way, the decision for making or buying a decision is, it is a process. We'll see in the stages, when you come to the stages for the make or decision, we'll see there. Then company decide to outsource some or all their logistic function in order to what? Why they want to make outsources? It might be one of the reasons is reduce costs, make more effective use of the working capital, either focus their energies creating differentiations, promoting revenue growth. There are different reasons for outsourcing. So we'll see everything step by step. The, to maximize this benefit, the benefit for the company, review of make or buy decision must be implemented. Every time the company, even if, because I, I told you that, it must be consistent manner. So whether it is buying or ma making, it must be a consistent implementation and must be a review. The key objectives that arise from the definition of purposes means we have different keys whenever to reach these decisions. One, to describe the set of factors which affect the make or buy decisions. In the processes, we should take some key objective. What are the factors? Whenever we make a decision either to make or buy, so we should take the factors to understand better the challenges and barriers the company face when deciding whether or not outsource a company or process. Whenever we make a decision either to make or buy, we should have an understanding. What are the challenges to make buying? What are the, large, the, the challenges to prefer buying to making or making to buying? And the last, to suggest some tools and methods for addressing make or buy decision. We should have a module. We should make what are the, the tools which help me to arrive these decisions, either to make or buy. So if you see in the introduction part, what in general, what are the make or buy decision? So let us see the reasons. Some company may prefer making to prefer buying, but that company, when they prefer for making, what are the reasons behind of buy, make, uh, preferring making? There are a number of reasons a company who consider when it comes to making in-house. Those reasons are, the first one is cost, cost concerns. If making costs less than or lesser than the buying, it means buying costs higher than making, so the company prefers making. This is one of the reasons. The other, desire to expand the manufacturing focuses. If the company is already making manufacturing in-house, and if they have the desire to expand more, so they prefer to making instead of buying. The other, need to for direct control over the product. It is clear. If you are the one who are making instead of buying, every control is of the product is on your hand. And the other reason is intellectual property concerns. Copyright, pat patent right. For these cases, you might keep for making prefer than buying. Quality control concern. Because you know that instead of buying, I think if you are making, everything is on your control for the quality. The other one is supplier and reliability. If you don't have any belief on your supplier, for sure you don't go to buying. You prefer for making. The other, lack of competent suppliers. This is the same like the reason as we've seen here. Because if you don't believe on supplier of no supplier, lack of competence suppressed, so you prefer for making. Volume too small, for sure. The functions, the activity, or the items that you need is the volume is very small, you don't go to buying. You prefer still making. 
Reduction of logistic costs. Already, this is the cost concern. Maintain backup source, because if you are the one making from beginning to the end, everything is on your hand, so you have the backup source. The other is political and environmental reasons. When you come to the like, Ethiopian situation at this time, for sure, it is very difficult for, you know, if you are uh, buying or outsourcing somewhere nowadays because of Ethiopian situations, for sure you will prefer for making. And organizational pride. <laughs> this is a really, very interesting reason. You know why? This is made by this company. This, com this thing is made by my company. This is a pride. So for this reason, you might prefer making to buying. So, the other reasons. Let's see the reason for buying. Some company like prefer making, the other company may prefer buying. What are the reasons behind buying? Lack of technical expert experiences. If I lack technical experience, I don't have any option. Even if I wish to make, I should buy because I lack technical exp experiences. Suppliers expertise on the technical areas. This is the same reason. Cost consideration. If the cost of making higher than cost of buying, we prefer buying. Need for small volume. If the volume is very small, I want to give to buying. Insufficient capacity to produce in house. This is clear. Brand preference. Let's say Ethiopian national team. They might wear the one. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. If, yes. Let's say, okay. Ethiopian national team. And instead of wearing the wheel that made up made of Ethiopia, they might want to wear Nike, Adidas. For these cases, instead of making, they might prefer buying. And the last one is strategic partnership. By the way, strategic alliance, if you want to create with joint venture or strategic alliance, if you would like to have, instead of making, even if you have the capacity for making, because of strategic partnership, you might prefer buying. So this is the reason why the company wants to make or the reason behind the buying. But let's see the stage for making or buy decision. Managers should take a time, must be structured. They should make strategic choice. It is a critical stages for make or buy decision. It's, we don't make spontaneously. So what are the stages the management should follow in order to reach the best decision? either to make or to buy. Let's see the stage. Make or buy decision is not to be made only for economical consideration. Imagine, not only for the sake of basis of economic consideration, but it is core competency. In order to be competent from your environment, you should make very strategic, consistent manner and structured decisions. To make the best make or buy decision, we should see the effect of the final product quality. Why? Because what we would like to, what is the worry behind for making of a decision? Because of the final product of the quality and the company's technology. That makes me to worry either to choose, make or buy decisions. So there are main four stages in order to make the best strategic decision to choose either to make or buy. Those stages are Preparation, data collections, data analysis, and feedback. What does preparation mean? When the management, they want to make a preference or make a decision from make or buy, first they should make a preparation. In the preparation stage, creating a team with the team leader, and we give the, for the team the product requirements. We identify what that product requires. And the team must aspect this and may well understand, have understanding about the product requirements. Once we finish the preparation, we go to data collections. As you know, data collection means simply it is collecting information on various aspects of either to make or buy. Then we make up a workshop on weighing, rating, and cost for make or buy decision. Means if I want to make, what are the weighing and the rate and the cost? If I wanted to make buy, what are the weighing, rating, and the cost? Then we make comparison. Once we 
get a collection of data, then the, the third part stage is, sorry, data analysis. Using different type of, or different tools, we make the analysis. Then based on data analysis, based on the, based on the data collected, we make analysis graphically using table, whatever we want. We make analysis. Based on that analysis, we get what? The feedback. Either buying is better or making is better for the company's benefit. So by following the above structured, imagine structured, must be consistent manner. Organization can make an informed decision on make or buy decision. A make or buy decision is one of the key technique management practice. So when people think that, they think that it is very easy decision, but it's not easy decision. Make or buy decision is, it is very strategic decision. Due to the global outsourcing, make or buy decision, making has become popular and frequent. Manufacturing and service industries have diversified across the globe. There are a number of suppliers offering products and services for traffic. By the way, we are living in the global world. So this make or buy decision is, it is very strategic decision, which helps for not only for economic benefit of the company, but for the key core competency of the company. Following the standard process of the making, making the make or buy decision, the activity are transparent and the decision made for the best interest of the company. Or you know that. In the first stage of preparation, we have already created a team. So that team, when they make a decision for either make or buy, they should be, they must be transparent. And also any decision they make, it should be for the interest of the company. Thank you for listening. If you have any question, you are welcome. Thank you very much. So, yes, any questions about uh, buy or uh, make decision? Any questions? Uh, move fast, yes, uh, please. Anybody with a question now? Who is supposed to be our third presenter? Yes, Jerusalem. Um, uh, I have, an, uh, have a question for Shmedlis. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, can you, can you elaborate how politics and environmental reasons uh, led uh, to make uh, uh, making decision? You know, uh, is there any um, experience or you can share us how politics can uh, lead us for, me, for making? Uh, this is the first question. And the second one is uh, when you uh, present on the uh, steps for uh, making decision or buying decision. Uh, you said the first step is preparation and the second step is uh, data collection. I think uh, unless you collect data first and see what is really happening on ground, can you prepare? I think uh, what I'm arguing is, is it, isn't it, isn't it uh, the vice versa? You know, uh, first you have to collect the data, what uh, really looks like on the uh, ground, uh, the in, in external environment looks like you have to first uh, collect data and then you prepare the company or the management should prepare uh, for action. Uh, isn't that so? That's, that's, uh, that's uh, what I would like to ask you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yarus. Uh, your first question is, why you choose as a reason political environment to be the reason for making? Is that your first question? Yes. One of the reason the company prefer for making to buying is political environment. I don't want to go far. Just take Ethiopian situation nowadays. Let's say my company, I was before outsourcing, buying one item from Shashamene one of the region. But nowadays in Ethiopia, there is not good condition. So we are now forced to make in a house because I don't have any peace stability that it makes me instead of buying. So I, I, it is a reason for making. This is, I don't want to go too far. Ethiopian situation is in it. 
Uh, your second question is, I understand what. When I say preparation means, it doesn't mean preparing for decision. No, I say that the first stage for make or buy decision is, preparation means it's not preparing for decision. Preparation means team creation. Team creation and require, identifying the requirement for decisions. And finally, make awareness for that team. It's not the decision. The dis do you understand what I was saying? So that is the reason. If I understand, if you are, if I answer your question, this is the answer. Thank you very much. Is there anybody? Agos, yes. Your mic is active, please. Yes, well, yes. Shimi. Yes. Uh, maybe I, I can just uh, like, uh, like the political, I think also uh, can also the legal aspect uh, affect the buy or make decision. Maybe if you can say something like uh, if the government has uh, rules and regulations as to something to be done or not to be done, would that also affect, can you say a little bit about that? Thank you. I understand. Yeah, I accept. Yes, it might be the reason. Agos, do you have a question? I think, uh, can, can I say something, Shumadlis, on this? Please. Okay, you know, uh, I think the, uh, the recent excise tax law, uh, which is uh, um, uh, declared by the uh, government, also can answer this question, what uh, Samuel said. You know, uh, many of many companies uh, are affected by the recent excise, excise tax law. For example, the liquor companies, uh, the beer company, and uh, even the uh, bottled water companies are affected by this. So uh, this may uh, can affect, uh, you know, their buying or uh, making decision, especially when they use this. Uh, materials are sourced from other companies like for example the bottle the plastic bottle uh, was uh, imported from the uh, you know uh, some countries and some of them are making it but this excise tax law the the, the, the excise tax law affected them uh, you know to uh, make uh, totally in the company uh, i think this is uh, this has also uh, may, may add what Samuel said. By the way, uh, I, in my presentation, the reason for making or buying is not 100%. I try to put some of the reasons. So thank you for your contribution. There are some other reasons also. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, now, as I answer that, now the issue of politics, uh, why politics and what is the role of politics in making or by decision? Now, politics can be classified into two ways. 
there is what you call organizational politics within the organization. Organizational politics is about power and sharing of resources. Power, authority, and resources. So within that organization, you find uh, senior managers and other managers. You know, there's always competition. It's about competition. And that competition can make a decision for buying or making. And if you are buying, where to buy? You know, for example, if the CEO of an organization is very powerful, he can whip the whole organization either to make or to buy irrespective of all the other factors. And if it is to buy, the CEO can decide where to buy. Right? Him being a, a, a very powerful person. Or maybe he's a chairman of that organization. He's the owner. Right? He can be able to make the decision. That is basically organizational politics. About who is who in an organization. Who makes the key decisions. And then through that, uh, the making or the buying. For example, if the owner of the business uh, realizes that uh, buying may be better than making and is concerned about short-term success, then he can go for that. He can focus for buying. But if he's concerned about long-term success, and by making you'll get long-term success then you can go for long-term success which is making now suppose the chairman of the of the organization the owner wants to make but the ceo wants to buy position carries the day politics plays again Depends on the CEO. The CEO may carry, I mean, the, the, owner of the, the owner of the business may carry the day because he's the one who assembled the CEO, right? But there are also some organization whereby the CEO is also very powerful, especially if he's an expert. Maybe the CEO is an engineer, right? And you are dealing with an engineering problem in an organization. But the owner is not engineering, but is the most powerful. So there is a tendency for the CEO's decision, who is the engineer, to carry the day. And that is politics in organization. They have to do with power, authority, and all that, and decision making. Now, on a big scale now, politically, for example, when it comes to countries, you find that. Uh, Countries have political alienations. And they trade with countries that have similar or related alienations. Or people they can work with well, better. Right? Now, if I will not give you an example of Ethiopia, I'll give you an example of Kenya. Uh, for the last um, for the last 20 years last 20 years we've seen a lot of chinese influence in kenya right that is right from the year 2002 we had an election in 2002 and the the good president we elected uh, moved what he's calling looking east you know looking east is political looking east you know and therefore, you went Chinese. A lot of business has been done with Chinese up to today. And I tend to believe China is the biggest uh, trading partner. I, I need to get the statistics, but there is high chance. Because of the kind of infrastructure that the Chinese have built for the last 10 years. Okay, let's call it 20 years, for the last 20 years. Actually, the president we elected in 2002 uh, to 2013 is the one who opened a lot of windows in China. But the one we elected in 2013 today has even multiplied 
that more than 10 times what was done in between 2002 and 2000 and that. Not even 10 times, 100 times have even more in terms of political buying or making. So you find that previously, previously, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, we were so much Western world, Western Britain, and of course, uh, um, Britain and America, Canada and so forth. A little bit of Japan, although Japan is also in the eastern part of it. But, but we are so much on the eastern part. Sorry, on the western part. But now the last 20 years, we've been looking in the east. That's the Chinese way. And that now explains, explains decision making about buying and making. Uh, right now with the corona, you've seen what happens. A lot of buying from China. Right? Many other countries are making masks and PPEs and everything. But as the virus started ravaging the world, a lot of imports, even to Ethiopia, were from China. Masks, PPEs, and all that that was needed for the, uh, for the pandemic. But now as we are moving on, we started making, right? In Kenya here, we are making masks, we are making PPEs, and many other things. So these are political decisions that, uh, you know, uh, that one of our universities here that had a big textile factory was converted into a plant to be making masks and, and PPEs. And of course, many other factories around sanitizers, masks, PPEs, and so forth. I think the second question was uh, properly answered. I think I, I just wanted to clarify about the politics because before you go to buy, you have to prepare something. At least depending on what kind of procurement. Is it public or is it private? If it is private, you can just wake up and make the decision on the road where to buy or what to buy. But if it's public procurement, uh, public procurement is normally censored. You have to have a committee in place. They look at the need for whatever you want to buy, right? And then take you through some process. Making for public uh, consumption may not be a big deal, but the moment you talk about buying, especially in our country here, you must go through a very long procedure of vetting the suppliers, checking their financial capability, checking their technical capability, before you now finally give them the work to do. And that is now the data analysis you are talking about. I mean, the data collection, collect the data about the suppliers, evaluate them, and see what basically fits them, uh, fits for the day. I think that was properly answered, and the work is very, very much okay. <laughs> በተመረጥ ከፍ ብሎ መብረር ይቻላል ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ ስህት ኩባንያ ከከፍተኛ ትምህርት አግባብነትና ጥራት ኤጀንሲ ሙሉ ቅናና ባገኘንባቸው በማስተርስ ዲግሪ MBA በስትራቴጂክ ማኔጅመንት MBA በባንኪንግ እና ፋይናንስ MBA በቢዝነስ ሊደርሺፕ MBA በሪስክና ኢንሹራንስ MSc በኢንተርናሽናል ትሬድ እና ኢኮኖሚክስ ዘርፎች በእውቀት ለመቅረጽ ይበቁ ፕሮፌሰሮቻችን አረንጓዴ መብራታቸውን አብርተዋል በነገራችን ላይ በኬንያ ሀገር ከሚገኙ ስመጥር ዩኒቨርሲቲዎች በሚመጡ ፕሮፌሰሮች የትኩረት መስክ ትምርቶቹ መሰጣታቸው ልዩ ያደርገናል በመርጥ የትምርት ስርዓት የተገነባው ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ በመጀመሪያ ዲግሪ በአቪዬሽን ማኔጅመንት በሆቴል ማኔጅመንት በአካውንቲንግ እና ፋይናንስ በማርኬቲንግ ማኔጅመንት አስተማማኝ ትምርት ይገብዩና ራሱንና ሀገሩን ይለውጡ አድራሻ 22 አደባባይ ወደ ሾላ በሚወስዶ መንገድ ላይ National Aviation College የ National Airways ስህት ኩባንያ ህልሞን አሁን ያደርጋል Now what's our third presenter number 3 I think we need to move on to the next presenter. Who was our number three presenter? Um, yes, I'm right here. Go ahead. Uh, do slideshow.
Okay. Uh, my name is Sam Zoro, and uh, my part was uh, about the challenge of uh, strategic leadership. Uh, the next page, I will try uh, to put it in four sections. First, uh, I, uh, I try to define the le what the leader, uh, leadership and strategic leadership mean. Then I will, uh, I'm trying to uh, uh, demark the difference between strategic leadership and uh, leadership. Then uh, the challenge faced by the strategic leadership and what actions will overcome those uh, challenges. Uh, so when we go to leadership, uh, a leader is a person who influences a group of people toward this, the achievement of the goal. So a leader is uh, a person with uh, the ability to lead uh, the actions we uh, and uh, go to the achievement. So uh, a leader is a person uh, and someone who can see how things can be improved and who realize people to move toward this, the better vision. So in general, a person who produce a change and movement or work towards making their vision in a, a, a reality, establishing a direction through achieving the goal, aligning people and uh, structures uh, toward this, the aim we are going to, and also focus on the results. This is a person who, who can be a leader. So when we go to a leadership, a leader is a person, a leadership is a process. It's a process of social influence, which maximizes the effects of others and toward this achievement of the goal. It is the process. It's not, leadership is not uh, about the management or the title or the seniority you have. It's a process of influencing uh, and uh, uh, to gain the maximum uh, we have to. And it's uh, tapping into un uh, unlimited human potential and turning into a desired result. So this is leadership. What's a leadership strategy? A leadership strategy is a combination of uh, the process and a person. It's the ability and the wisdom to make a consequential decision about the end, a strategy, or a tactic. It marries management and leadership. Managements, all uh, managements are not a leaders. So uh, managements need to be combined with a leadership process to attain uh, the goal we aim. Is a, basically the combination of a leader having all the basic leadership elements, plus being able to strategically in thinking and acting those uh, things. The, the leader, strategic leader, uh, need to have uh, different abilities organizational ability and individual ability. Let's say organizational ability first. Uh, the organizational ability needs to uh, uh, configure a strategic orientation. Be strategically oriented. Uh, we have to know where we are going and uh, we have to be committed to attain uh, those strategies. Translating strategy into actions. Uh, having a plan to achieve uh, some goal is not enough. Uh, translating these strategies to action is uh, a mandatory ability that a, strat a strategic leader needs to have. Alignment. We may have uh, an organization in the human resource. Uh, these two resources need to be combined in, in order to achieve uh, some results. So alignment ability is required. Determine effective uh, intervention point. Uh, we have to know where, uh, where and when we have to uh, make a change and make a move. Develop a strategic competence. Uh, we have to be strategically competent enough to uh, achieve those uh, visions or uh, 
strategies or the ink we need. There are individual abilities that a leader uh, in a strategic leadership need to have. The first one is restlessness. It is uh, dissatisfactions with the uh, present. Uh, we don't have to stay in the present uh, uh, situation so long. We need to, uh, we need to have ability to change things and uh, to think towards to the future. Uh, observative capacity, recognizing new ideas, new things, new technology, and so on. Adopting capacities is also have uh, ability to uh, to change. And the wisdom, the most important is the wisdom, a leadership wisdom, taking the right action at the right time. So these abilities need to be incorporated in order to have a successful leadership, a strategic leadership. So the the second uh, topic is the different. I think we've lost the voice. Summer it. Uh, Samuel. Yes. Yes, can you locate where this lady is? She, we have lost her voice. Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay, okay. I think, I think she's lost the connection as well. She, she had asked me to share her screen because her network was uh, not good. And she was joining with her uh, uh, audio, I think. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, let me continue in a hurry. Yes? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the difference between strategic leadership and a leader. A leader is uh, uh, refers to a leader at any level with an organization. It focuses as uh, individual leadership model and uh, exists because of two or more people are arguing in common direction. But strategic leadership is all about the leaders at the top of the organization and they are focusing on leader, leader and follower relationship and divides from the context in which the leadership is occurring and encompasses the scope, the duration, and organizational change. So uh, strategic leadership is more broad and it's uh, operating in all over the organization and uh, leadership is uh, all about uh, uh, an individual focused and it's, uh, uh, it's in agreement with two or more people. Uh, so in the next, uh, the next title is uh, the challenge. The main topic is all about challenge. Uh, so we define and uh, we know what's the difference between. So what's the challenge in strategic leadership? The, we could have a weak uh, strategy. Uh, while developing a strategy, it's, uh, it could be strong and we have to have those abilities, organizational and individual abilities, and it has to be imp implemented, to, it has to be easy to be implemented, so our strategy need to be strong. It could not be, uh, it should not be weak. And uh, effective training, and uh, while we develop a strategy, we have to train our uh, employees and communicate uh, our strategy to them. And uh, uh, if we uh, give them an effective training, the strategy will, could fail. Lack of resources, we may not get the uh, uh, capital or the human resource that uh, can be uh, suitable to uh, proceed this strategic uh, uh, plans and uh, the other one is lack of communication as uh, as I said you uh, having a strategy is not enough communication is the basic one and uh, it could it has to be transparent and honest to communicate in quality of effect 
effective organization. So it has to be transparent means it has to be communicated well uh, to uh, those under the organization and it may lack of following thought. Strategy execution will never end. It, is, it needs a continuous uh, formal review. So once uh, we deploy the program, and it's it's not an end by itself. So we need a follow-up review and uh, why it's not working. Uh, so uh, in order to make those strategies uh, uh, go to an end. So to overcome these challenges, uh, we need to set a goal. Uh, we need to know where we are going. The other one is delegate more. That means we have four, four steps understanding your performance, knowing your people, what's, uh, what I'm trying to uh, perform and what's the resource I have, being clear about the purpose of the task. Since I know the goal, I have to communicate to, the, to those people that's where I'm going in the purpose of the task they are assigned, assigning and rewarding. After I identify the people and assigning them, I have, uh, if they accomplish well, I have to reward them in order to motivate them. So maximizing your unique value. Uh, everybody has uh, not the same quality, so uh, the unique value need to be identified in order to be successful and get role clear, clarity. The, everybody need to uh, know their role in the organization clearly. So uh, by doing uh, these activities, uh, uh, we can overcome the challenge we are facing in strategic leadership. Thank you. This is what I have. Okay, good presentation. Uh, questions, please. Yes, she does. Uh, thank you, Samrait, for presentation. This is what we lack these days, especially in Africa, what leadership means. Uh, but my question is for one organization. One organization should have only leader, should have only managers, or both are exist in one company. Do you understand my question, Samrait? Uh, everybody. And, uh, uh, cannot be a leader. And leaders are uh, uh, unique with different abilities. We need uh, managers, uh, but the leaders uh, uh, take the the resources or the, the uniqueness of uh, their ability and process the strategy to be successful. So everybody is not cannot be a leader. Uh, let me give you an uh, an example. A sheep cannot be a leader, but a lion can be a leader. In uh, uh, in uh, animals also. So uh, everybody cannot be uh, a leader uh, in the world. So leaders are unique, but they are so important in the organization to be successful. Mm. Okay. Yes, you are satisfied? No, I'm not satisfied because my question is, in one organization, should we have only leader or only manager or both are there in one organization? Take one, you, your, your bank, let's say she's working in the bank. Your bank, new bank, do they have leaders? Do they have managers or leaders and manager are there? Uh, remember this question is asked to everybody. So anybody who has answer, please bring it. Maybe, maybe can, I, can I add? Yes, yes. 
Okay. Uh, I think Shime's uh, question makes it uh, perfect, and maybe when Samra was trying to explain, maybe she didn't get the question clear. Uh, as to me, I, I take it as like uh, uh, somebody, uh, by, uh, just one person could be a very good manager, but he can, he can be, uh, or he can be a very poor leader. Uh, remember that uh, leadership is more of, of influence and is uh, leading and uh, others are following. Whereas uh, a manager is somebody who directs and tells what to do and where to do it and how to do it and, and so on. So uh, it could be a person who is a manager and at the same time a, a leader. Or it could be just a manager who is poor at leading people, but he's good at directing as a manager. And at times we can have an organization where you have the boss, the, the senior manager, who is good at managing the company. But then you could also have somebody else who is really influential than the, the senior manager or the, uh, the CEO, but who is a very good leader as well. So I think this kind of cohesion or uh, combination could be uh, existing in the company. And maybe some uh, also company uh, could have uh, uh, a manager, but uh, maybe there's uh, no leader uh, to mention in a company. I think that is what I could say. Another person, please, uh, who can talk about leadership and management. Ayob, are you back today, sir? Hagos, are you with us? Jerusalem, are you with us here? Yeah. Now, now, this discussion yes. about, uh, yes, y yes, please, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I just don't have a question. I don't have any, any question. Now, now, this discussion about leadership and management is very old. You know, it started in the 1960s. Uh, some people call themselves leaders, others call themselves managers. Uh, but what is important is not what they call themselves. So now anybody can call himself anything. Right? You know, in our country here, we have around 10 presidents. But you see, there's only one sitting president. No. We have, a, I think we have now one former president that's retired. And then we have another person who calls himself the president. You know, himself. So people also call him the president. Right? We also have other presidents from other countries who reside in our country. I don't want to mention names here. Right? So anybody can call him a, himself a president, he can call himself a manager, he can call himself a, a leader. But the issue is, what is the role of a leader? You know, it's not about the name and calling yourself, it's about what do you do? What are the roles of a leader? What are the qualities of a leader? Who is a manager and what manager what does manager do? Now, I said this discussion started back in the 1960s, and it's still going on. Right? I think there are studies done by a man called uh, uh, Peter and Waterman. I think you can look for it and see their discussion about what is leadership, what is management, what are the differences who is a strategic manager, who is not strategic, what is strategic management. But basically, uh, leadership is about the influence. Leadership is about influence. It's about future orientation. You know, people can look ahead, far ahead. Management is a little bit more short span, right? So now, as you go, you will be able to see now, leadership is futuristic. A good leader who runs an organization today will not just be concerned about today, will be concerned about the future. Where will the organization be in the future? A manager tries to work within the moment, you know, and make sure that the day-to-day -day and just the, you know, the near future has been sorted. But a leader is more futuristic. 
is strategic. So a leader is more strategic than a manager. Now, of course, um, we need leaders in organizations and we need managers in organizations, right? But not, they are not themselves to call themselves leaders or to call themselves managers. You know, authority is, is delegated or given, right? That's why when a, when a board, the management board of an organization is looking for a CEO, an organization they have to decide whether they are going to look for a leader or they are going to look for a manager if they are futuristic then they are more likely to get a leader who is going to steer that organization in the long run now if the organization needs to be taken care of in the long run by a leader and then they employ a manager that person will not make that organization successful on the other hand, if an organization needs a manager and you bring a leader, chances are that there's no 100% that that organization will do well. But of course, we have some people who are lucky, who have both leadership and management qualities. They should be very few, or they are very few, who can be able to tangle between the work of a manager and the work of a leader. Now, uh, sometimes back you must have uh, studied about theories of management and uh, principles of management. I don't know how you call the unit, but I'm assuming you must have captured and seen uh, you know, the whole issue about management. W what is it all about, right? So at different times uh, in the organization, there are times you definitely need a manager to sort the issues there. And there are times that you need a leader show the direction right. now for example with this covid i continue talking about this covid we need more leaders in organizations that can be able to steer the organization out of this so that this organization can survive this pandemic and maybe when the pandemic is over life can continue right you need people who are thinking futuristic mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yes, that, that's my contribution. Now, before I forget, what time are we supposed to break? That we don't uh, we don't keep you here when you're supposed to be somewhere else. What time are we supposed to break? Seven thirty. What time? Seven thirty. So seven thirty. Sorry. Seven thirty. And what is the time now? Left seven. with thirty minutes. How many minutes? 30. 30. 30, zero. 30 minutes. Can we get one presenter to close the day? Yeah. Maybe? Yes. Anybody uh, who can present? Can I present, uh, Dr. Yersalim? Yes, please. Yes, please. So that we move ahead. Okay. Sabrina, Alfred. Alfred. Uh, can see for who now? Yes, that's it. Mm, Jerusalem, is it? Are you? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Uh, Kati, Kati, share your session. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Thanks. Sorry. Thank you again. Uh, thank you again. Uh, and uh, my presentation is uh, focus on focus on uh, and contracts. Uh, before I proceed to uh, uh, the details, I, I try to uh, give a short definition about strategic alliance and the strategic contracts uh, and uh, the scope of strategic alliance. And finally, what are the roles of uh, strategic alliance uh, will be uh, covered in this presentation. Uh, from the definition, we can see that strategic alliance is it's a, a cooperation or a collaboration uh, which aims uh, for uh, synergy. Uh, as we, as we uh, probably know uh, from our last presentation uh, discussion on this course, uh, companies uh, make strategic alliance for the purpose of synergy, for creating synergy. And each partner uh, hopes that 
the benefits from the alliance will be greater than uh, those from the individual efforts. If the benefit is uh, less than uh, the individual efforts, strategic alliance will, be, will fail. So uh, the basic reason for uh, making collaboration or cooperation uh, through strategic alliance is, uh, you know, to, to benefit uh, from uh, uh, the alliance. Uh, and strategic alliance uh, involves uh, technological transfer, uh, you know, access to knowledge and expertise, uh, economic speci specialization, uh, shared expense and uh, shared risk. When we see the scope of a strategic alliance, uh, uh, the, uh, it, it has a wide range of inter uh, firm uh, linkage, which includes uh, joint venture, uh, minority equity uh, investments, uh, equity swaps, uh, joint research and development, uh, joint manufacturing, marketing, long-term uh, sourcing agreements, uh, shared distribution, uh, and uh, standard setting. These are the scopes in the uh, strategic alliance. When we see the role of uh, strategic alliance, strategic alliance plays uh, many roles. Uh, we can see that the first thing is uh, bringing a strategic fit. The first uh, role that strategic alliance plays is uh, making strategic fit. As, you, as we know, business partners, uh, do, uh, can be looking at the same industry segment, but they have different perspective uh, for seeing uh, uh, what they look uh, and uh, you know, this is where the shared vision, objective and interest between the alliance partners come into play. Uh, unless they have, they are, unless they share uh, the same vision and objective and interest, uh, strategic alliance will not be uh, will not be effective. So, creating a fit, feasibility, and attractive matrix is one of the best way to derive strategic fit. And apart from this strategic fit, uh, the operational fit and cultural uh, fit also plays a key role in uh, determining uh, business uh, alliance. Uh, the second role that strategic alliance plays is creating value. You know, alliance have a great role in uh, creating value. Uh, uh, I can, uh, I try to uh, show some uh, uh, justifications here. If two companies coming together cannot create uh, compelling value for uh, their joint customers, then the very purpose of strategic alliance will be lost. Uh, for, for creating value, the two alliance should, alliance should have more strengths when combined than they would have independently. Uh, if if they have uh, more um, strengths independently than the uh, strategy, than making alliance, uh, it will be it will uh, strategic alliance will fail. We must clearly understand how value exchange is uh, not uh, value creation, and the third uh, role that strategic alliance plays is uh, providing access to new target markets. Uh, this is uh, the other role that a strategic alliance plays. Uh, it expand, uh, expanding a strategic market, which is one of the most effective means of sustaining success. And the other one is uh, accelerating the entry into new market without having uh, to allocate significant financial resources. You know, strategic alliance accelerates uh, the entry into new markets. Uh, this is one of the role it plays. The fourth one is accessing shared knowledge and resources. Strategic Alliance plays a great role in sharing knowledge and also uh, resources to business partners or uh, business partners uh, can share resources. This is the very purpose of Strategic Alliance, to share resources. So uh, from the example, you can see that a tutoring company, a tutoring company, uh, uh, thus finding it hard to find mass tutors within its community can partner with a computer software manufacturer and release a software series of mass tutoring lessons that assist a larger student population with its mass service. Uh, from the example, you can understand that if two companies joint uh, uh, make a, uh, uh, an alliance, they can 
uh, solve uh, uh, a problem and they can share uh, resource and they can share knowledge. Uh, the fifth uh, role that strategic alliance plays is uh, create uh, economics of scale. Uh, it creates uh, it, uh, economic uh, scale. Uh, this refers to the cost advantage uh, uh, the companies or the company gains from expanding or ordering in greater volume from vendors or uh, suppliers. And it also gives access to wider market channels, uh, which is which a company may not, uh, may not otherwise be able to afford outside its partners. Uh, from this concept, we can uh, see that uh, you know uh, cost reductions uh, and you know access to uh, market channels will be uh, 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 benefited from strategic alliance. Uh, the sixth one is uh, strengthening strategic objective. Uh, strategic alliance plays, in, uh, plays a great role in strengthening strategic uh, objectives. Most strategic objectives of a company is, uh, the most strategic objective of any company is to overcome its uh, market rivals through development of uh, competitive advantage. Uh, in a strategic alliance, a company can partner with one of its major competitor and utilize each other's resource to achieve dual success. As you probably uh, uh, under, uh, know, uh, last time we were uh, having a discussion on uh, Volkswagen's case. Uh, Volkswagen had uh, so many strategic alliance with uh, companies that share uh, the same industry. So, um, you know, by making strategic alliance, uh, the Volkswagen uh, group tried to utilize uh, so many resources from uh, its partners. So this is one uh, advantage uh, for dual success, of course. Uh, you can see that they, they had a strategic alliance with Suzuki and uh, other uh, uh, car manufacturers uh, outside of the Europe, even in the uh, Far East and so on. Uh, this, the sevens, the, there's the seven uh, uh, role that uh, is played by strategic alliance each, uh, it shares uh, the risk. Uh, one of the main drive of for alliance is risk reduction. Uh, this is one of the main uh, drive. Uh, in a competitive... Uh, Ish, ish, ish. Hit the ball. Hit the ball. Can I proceed? Can yes, proceed. Okay. okay. Uh, well, uh, sorry for the distraction. Anyway, uh, and uh, one of the uh, the very purpose of strategic alliances, as uh, we have been discussing is risk reduction in a competitive and turbulent business environment like uh, like what I have said in the uh, automobile manufacturing industries. Sharing economic risk between two or more companies can help mitigate organizations exposure uh, to downturns and unexpected shift in customer demand. Uh, let's proceed. Next slide, please. Uh, and the, the other uh, role is strategic contracts. Uh, strategic contract is uh, uh, allows partners to take advantage of uh, combined resources, risk allocation, and uh, long-term partnering with, will also foster each company's ability to uh, innovate. Uh, as I can, as I uh, try to explain earlier, uh, my title uh, uh, deals with the role of strategic alliance and contracts. That's why I proceed to the uh, strategic contract uh, part. Uh, companies try to use a variety of uh, patents to be benefited from the intellectual property of other companies, uh, which enable them to access their uh, patents and uh, copyrights, thereby promoting innovation. Next slide. Uh, so the role of, uh, when we see uh, under the role of uh, contracts, 
we see licensing and uh, franchising. Uh, these are part of uh, strategic contracts. Uh, licensing is another way, way of uh, way to enter uh, a market with a limited degree of risk. The licensing firm gives the licensee patent rights, trademark, uh, trademark rights, uh, copyrights, and know-how uh, on products and process. In return, the licensee will uh, produce the licensed products, market uh, those products in his assigned territory, and pay the licensor fees and. Uh, realities usually related to the scale uh, volume of the products and this type of agreement is generally welcomed by uh, foreign public authorities because it brings technology into uh, the country. Uh, when we see the uh, franchising, franchising uh, is uh, much similar to licensing but uh, they have uh, a little bit uh, uh, different, uh, differentiation. A franchising organization to tend to be more directly involved in the development and control of their marketing program. Uh, the, uh, and uh, generally, uh, uh, franchising and uh, licensing uh, is meant to uh, give uh, technology and uh, you know, uh, try to uh, give some markets, markets to uh, their partners through uh, their through contractual agreements. Next, and franchising mode helps in uh, lowering, low, lowering uh, political risk, lowering costs, uh, allows simultaneous expansion into different regions of the world, and well-selected partners bring financial investments as well as managerial capabilities to the, the operation. And in summary, both alliance and contracts play a great role in uh, achieving advantage of scale, scope, and speed. Uh, they increasing uh, market penetration, enhancing competitiveness in domestic as well as uh, global markets. Uh, they enhance product development, expand market development, uh, increase exports diversity, uh, create a new business and uh, reduce cost. These are the, uh, the issues that alliance and contrast play uh, in general, in, in short term, in short notice. Thank you so much. Okay, well done. I think the slides um, are very, very inclusive. So stimulus, yes. Thank you, Yeris. Like you asked me two questions, I have also two questions. Uh, <laughs> my first question is, uh, what are the conditions or the situation to choose a strategic alliance or strategic contract? They say Ethiopia Airlines has star alliance, it, it uses, it prefers strategic alliance, not strategic contract. So what are the situation? What are the criteria? Either to choose strategic alliance or strategic contract. Second question is, what are the challenges for strategic alliance and strategic contract? Thank you. Yes, um, anyone, anyone can answer, although she's a presenter. Yes, yes, uh, please respond. Is there anyone? No? Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Can I proceed? Yes, please go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I think the criteria for uh, what are the condition to choose strategic alliance and contracts, uh, as you as try, uh, as I try to explain, uh, companies or business partners or business uh, business organizations uh, choose a strategic alliance uh, for uh, different reasons. One of the main reason is to 
uh, you know, to share technological or uh, technological know-hows from uh, their uh, counterparts. Uh, like, uh, I want to give uh, an example from what we have been discussing in the, in, in the last uh, session. Uh, I, can, uh, I can give you an example from the Volkswagen uh, group. You know, they try to uh, use the technology, the, the, the digital technology from other companies uh, by making strategic alliance into their products. That's why they, they uh, try to keep their competitive uh, advantage through uh, updating themselves through technology. So uh, one of the conditions for uh, making strategic alliances to bring uh, technology into their, uh, into their uh, you know, uh, company or into their uh, production to upgrade their production uh, uh, skill. Uh, the other thing is uh, to share uh, risk, you know, in uh, some businesses are uh, in a very turbulent uh, and competitive environment. For example, the fashion industry is very much competitive and very much turbulent. The fashion industry by itself is uh, characterized by uh, a very competitive industry. So in order to uh, sustain in the business, these companies try to uh, share uh, their risk and try to share their um, uh, uh, costs by making alliance with some other companies they, that they believe they can share with. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the main uh, condition that companies try to use strategic alliance. And also in contracts, you can, uh, you, can, uh, uh, and, uh, you, can you can state uh, the same reason, you know, for, uh, for uh, manipulating the technology, for sharing resources, for uh, sharing risk, and uh, many other more reasons can be cited on this, uh, uh, even for you know penetrating into a new market, into a target market or a, a new market, uh, this is the reasons for uh, this is the reason or the condition or this is the criteria for choosing alliance and alliance and at the same time contracts. Uh, the other thing is what are the challenges uh, for strategic alliance in contracts? Uh, every uh, strategic alliance have its own uh, challenge and also uh, businesses. Uh, in a contractual agreement like the franchise and uh, licensing also have their own challenge. Uh, one of, uh, uh, I think one of the challenges is uh, incompatibility. Incompatibility is one of the challenges in a strategic alliance. Uh, I, 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 I want to uh, uh, get you back to the Volkswagen uh, example again. Uh, you know, in the case we, ha we have been uh, uh, discussing that Volkswagen tried to make a strategic alliance with, I don't know, one of the uh, uh, manufacturer, one, one of the uh, car companies in Europe. They make a strategic alliance, but it fails uh, soon. Why? Because both, uh, both companies uh, should have uh, strengths uh, to, to, to make alliance unless if one, one, one of the business, uh, uh, the business partner is uh, more stronger than the other and if uh, one, uh, uh, if, if, if two of them are not uh, strong enough to make the alliance, it will automatically fail. So uh, this is why incompatibility is one of uh, the reason for failure. Uh, and also you, you can cite on uh, licensing and uh, franchising. You know, most in franchising, if companies are not abide by the rules of the franchiser and uh, keep, the, keep the, uh, the status of the franchising, uh, the franchising will fail and some of them try to manipulate the knowledge and on the know-how of the franchiser and the, if they don't uh, keep the uh, you know the the, the know-how or the knowledge or the skill of the franchiser it will fail uh, 
So this, I think these are the, some of the reasons. Thank you. I hope uh, that that is uh, sufficient. Shimeles, another question maybe? I think it was uh, properly answered. Uh, the presentation is also okay. Another question, please. Okay, fine, that is appropriate. Mm. So thank you very much, we meet on Monday. We hope to finish everything on Monday. We we'll try you. to squeeze the timing then we can be able to wind up. So thank you very much. So see thank you, you on the Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Okay.